Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to get that zoomed and rotated sort of cross hair effect which you may have seen in many of my edits and montages. Just before we get started, I'd like to say that I've made several other tutorials all regarding Valorant editing so make sure you check out the playlist at the link with the link in the description, card in the top right and also as the end card on this video if you're interested in learning anything else. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. So to start off, what you're going to want to do is create a brand new After Effects project and then hit new composition and create a composition that matches the resolution of the clip you're using as well as the timing. So I'm going to leave mine at around a minute just because that's how long the clip actually is. However, I am going to shorten it down so I can obviously change the length of that later. Uh, my resolution is 2560 by 1440. Yours will most likely be 1920 by 1080. And yeah, so just make sure that that matches. And then I'm going to call my composition tutorial and hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is drag in the clip and all this clip is, is just a simple clip of me peeking around a corner down on uh, A long on Haven and killing a phoenix. Uh, as you can see right here, it's quite blurry, but give it a second. You see I peek out and kill a phoenix. That's literally it. So I'm going to cut this back to about roughly about here. Press Control Shift D to split the layer. And I'm going to delete the excess and drag this to the beginning of my composition. Now what I'm going to want to do is find the first frame where he goes into the scope. So by holding Control and using the left and right arrow keys, you can navigate frame by frame. So I'm going to find the frame where I first go into the scope, which is there. I'm going to press Control Shift D to split the layer. And I'm going to go to the frame where I come out of the scope, which is right here. Go back one. So just the last frame that I'm in the scope and press Control Shift D to split that as well. Now what you're going to want to do is mask out the scope. So in order to do that, come up to the top left where you see this little rectangle tool. Click and hold, then come down to ellipse tool. Make sure that you have the clip where you're actually in the crosshair selected. So in my case, that's this middle one. And I'm going to click somewhere in the top left, hold shift and then drag. And it's going to make a nice even circle for us. Try and match the size of this circle to, the uh, to your scope as best as you can. I'm going to leave mine about there because I do like to have a little bit of gap at the top and bottom. And then I'm going to press V on my keyboard and that's going to allow me to move it. So I'm just going to move it to the point. I'm going to line up these little squares with the edges of the crosshair. So I'm going to do something like like something like that which as you can see is now creating this um this black area around around the scope if you need to scale the mask because it's uh it's too big make sure you select the mask itself and then if you press ctrl t you'll be able to if you click on a corner and then hold shift you'll be able to scale it like this so i might make mine actually slightly smaller just like that and then drag it to the center sort of like something like that you know i'll leave mine there make sure that if you're going to scale you don't have the actual layer selected otherwise it's going to do this which is actually going to scale the whole layer which you don't want you just want to scale the mask now that i've got the mask set up so that it goes into the scope what you can do is go straight into animating the rotation and scale of it um however i don't want this black outline i want to have some gameplay behind it so what i'm going to do is duplicate this clip uh, the one where I'm in the scope by pressing Control D. That's going to duplicate it. I'm then going to come to the bottom layer and I'm going to delete the mask. And as you can see, it now looks as if nothing's happened. Now what I'm going to do is turn off the audio on this because obviously I don't want to hear the, the gunshot twice. And I'm going to press S on my keyboard to scale it and then drag up to the point where the scope fills the screen. So as you can see in the top corner, you've got the, the scope. You want to make sure that that is fully out of the screen like that. And then what I'm going to do is come over to effects and presets, type Gaussian and you'll see Gaussian Blur, and you're gonna drop it onto the clip, the back one, like this. And then change the blurriness up to about 50 or so, and then play with it so you get to the point where, where these lines here of the scope are no longer visible. So I'm gonna go for something something roughly around there. They're still kind of visible, but you know, it's, it's not too bad. So I'm going to leave my mind at about 23. As you can see now, it just makes the gameplay seem a lot more a lot more cohesive. It doesn't just suddenly snap to a to a black screen, uh, and it makes the going to the scope just seem a lot more sort of realistic. It's not as jarring. Now what you're going to want to do is come to the top layer, which is the actual scope itself, and you're going to press S on your keyboard, and you're going to click the stopwatch to scale it to set the scale then you're going to go to the final frame of here you can zoom in by using this little button down here or by dragging uh, this blue thing here like this uh, i tend to use this i have it a, a bind for this actually set onto my mouse so i can just use my mouse to zoom in and out to find the last frame of, of this clip which is going to be there actually i made a mistake as you can see it's got the um i didn't quite get the last frame here you can see it goes back to normal so i'm just going to go back here one drag this and then I'm going to drag this one up one and this up one. And now, as you can see, the final frame of the scope is actually of me being in the scope 
actually does have the mask applied. It's not um, it's not going back to the, the how the normal scope would look. Now that I've added a keyframe for scale at 100% at the beginning, I'm going to come to the final frame and I'm going to keyframe it again at 100 and I'm going to click this little diamond over here. And then I'm going to go back one, two, three frames and I'm going to scale it to the point where I want it to be at its smallest. So for me, that's going to be about, I'm going to say about 62. We'll go for something like that. So now if we watch this back, It looks something like that. You see it goes in and then it comes back out as he, as he gets shot. Now what we're gonna to want to do is keyframe the, the rotation. So I'm gonna press, click on this layer, press R on my keyboard to bring up rotation, keyframe it, go to the end just like we did before, hit the diamond, go back on two, three frames, and I'm gonna rotate it to the point where I like it. As I'm peeking the corner from the left side, or I'm peeking out, moving left, I'm gonna rotate it anti-clockwise. Um, and if I was peeking right, I'd obviously rotate it clockwise. This is just a personal preference. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to. And I'm going to rotate it to around something like 35. So if we watch this back now, you'll see what this looks like. You can see it goes in, turns, and then pops back out. Now, if we press this down arrow over here twice so that it shows it's a scale and rotation, I'm going to select all of these keyframes and press F9 on my keyboard and that's going to do something called easy easing which means that it's going to it's going to start zooming in slowly then it's going to speed up and then just as it's about to hit it's going to slow down again it just makes the movement seem slightly more dynamic you can adjust this on the graph editor if you're familiar with how the graph editor works if you're not don't worry about it I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for literally anyone to do um, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now to add some final touches to it, what I'm going to do is come over to effects and presets and I'm going to type in drop shadow and I'm going to drag the drop shadow onto the layer of the scope and I'm going to make the direction 180 and I'm going to make the distance to 10 and the softness to about 70 and then I'm going to increase the opacity to 100. And now as you can see what that looks like is it's just added this uh, shadow around the scope so it looks like it's popping out of the background rather than just being part of the same clip if you know what I mean. You know, just in my opinion, that looks a lot better. And now the final thing that I recommend you do, some people like it, some people don't. If you don't, just leave it as it is. But we can add this um, this crosshair effect. If I open this quickly, this is what it looks like. It's just a simple crosshair animation. And if I drag and drop this into my... And I'll leave a download link for this in the description. Um, it's part of my original editing pack which I released about a month, month and a half ago, something like that. So I'll leave the link to that in the description so you can go and download it. And I'm going to drag and drop it into my into my project. Now to add it onto the scope, what I'm going to want to do is come to the come to the top layer which actually contains the scope itself. Right click, hit pre-compose and then leave all attributes in and then whatever your composition name is and I'm going to hit OK. Now when I double click on this, it's going to open up the clip just like it was before and then I'm going to drag the crosshair.mp4 above the uh, the actual crosshair itself. Now what we want to do is find the section in this video where I actually scope in and kill that phoenix just like we did in here. You see where I peek around the corner and kill the phoenix. I need to find the exact same section in this video which is going to be right here. This is going to be the full uncut video so I'm going to find the section where I go into the scope just like we did before which is going to be right here by using control and the arrow keys. I'm going to go and it is there. Now I'm going to make sure I have the operator or whatever the, the, clip, the name of your clip is selected and I'm going to press the star or asterisk on my numpad and that's going to add a marker so I know exactly where that frame is. Now what I'm going to do is drag crosshair.mp4 over to where that starts and I'm going to zoom in so I can get a bit of a closer look. I'm going to make sure that the start of this video lines up with the first frame on there as you can see. Now, to, in order to make the crosshair part of the scene so that you don't have this background, you're going to right click on crosshair.mp4, come up to blending mode and select screen. All that's going to do is just make it part of the clip so that, you know, when, you, when you're scrolling through and the crosshair appears, you can see it's actually part of the clip. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the crosshair animates in way too late. You see, I've already got the kill before it actually starts animating in. So what I'm going to do is right click on the crosshair.mp4, go to time, time stretch, and you're going to want to adjust this to the point where it animates in how you want it to. So 100 is going to be full speed, 200 is going to be two times speed, 300 is going to be three times speed, but I don't, obviously don't want to slow it down. I want to make it faster. So I'm going to put mine at 20, which means it's going to be, it's going to last a fifth of the original length. So as you can see, if it's 100, that's six seconds, 34 milliseconds. So I'm going to put this to 20. That's going to make it last just over one second. And I'm going to hit OK. And that should be just about enough time. As you can see, bang. And you go, there's still some time to spare. But, you know, we don't have to worry about that. 
you don't have to worry about that as that'll be cropped off but as long as it's animated in before I've actually got the kill that's all that I care about. Now in order to make it fit the scope what we want to do is make sure that you have crosshair selected and you'll see these points appear around the edge of it and you're just going to click hold shift and drag it up so that it fills the screen. Alternatively, you can click crosshair and before press S and then drag it up like we did with the other with the other layers and just make sure that it fills the screen. And now when we go back to the original composition, you should see, oh look, it's now appeared in our scope just like that. If you'd like to change the color of the crosshair, go back into the pre-composition we made earlier, go over to effects and presets, type in hue, and then you see hue and saturation, drag that onto crosshair and before, tick colorize, and then where it says color hue, you see this zero degrees next to it. You can drag this and it's going to change the color of it and drag up the saturation so that you can get a color, you know, that's more vibrant. So I might go for something more, I keep dragging, we'll see if we can find something like that, a nice red. We'll go for something like that. So now if I go back to the tutorial, you can see there's now a red crosshair that animates across and he gets killed. If I preview this, that's what it looks like. You might want to mess around with the animation slightly. I feel like it pops back out too soon. No, let's see that again. So I might just mess around with the scale and the rotation slightly. I might drag them forwards a couple frames, maybe something like that. We'll see how that looks. Maybe back one frame. And I much prefer how that looks. I prefer the uh, the quicker snap out rather than uh, rather than it coming out slowly. But that's just my opinion. You know, it's completely up to you. Depending on how long the clip is, depends on whereabouts you want to put these keyframes as well. Um, so you can animate it so that you know it, it goes in towards the middle like this, which you know I don't think looks quite as good. I prefer the snap when it comes out like this. But that's. Pretty much it. All you may want to do now is add some sync shape, time remapping, something like that. I made a tutorial on how to do all of that, which will be linked to the description as well as the card in the top right corner, so make sure you check that out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys found it useful. Just a quick tutorial teaching you how to do one of these, you know, really simple but really effective um, effects. Make sure you check out my other tutorials with the playlist in the description or as the end card on this video. And that's pretty much it for today. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one.